a massive tomb that was hidden from the world for 1,800 years. An ancient secret that had been buried under the ground was revealed to the world at last. Four ancient tombs in the wide plains of Pogamli Naju. For a long time before they were excavated, they were simply thought to be hills. But during some maintenance work in the area in 1996, one of the small hills was revealed to be an ancient tomb. What was surprising was the strange shape of the tomb. The overall shape was that of a trapezoid. The size of the tomb was ever more surprising. 40 meters long and 6 meters high, it was among one of the most massive tombs. Archaeologists couldn't contain their excitement as they excavated the tomb. What could it have been? Pogamni tomb number three had dozens of smaller tombs inside. It had multi-stories like an apartment building. The shape of the tombs was also all different, as if it had been a showroom for unusual tombs. The corridor-style stone chamber was built with stone so that one could enter the chamber to bury the dead. Pits where the urns were buried were the most common type found in Pogamni tomb number three. There were also tombs on the upper part that placed stones around the coffin. And also tombs lined with stone with entrances to the side. In all, there were seven different types of tombs, including stone-lined coffins and wooden coffins in Pogamni tomb number three. There were a total of 41 burial facilities. It was an ancient tomb unseen anywhere else in the world. Then how was this tomb, with so many chambers, ever built? Pogamli tomb number three was made by building graves one over the other on different floors. In order to see how it was formed, we analyzed the cross section of the tomb. It seems as tomb number three was formed in three stages. At first, there were only urn tombs. Then a large stone chamber was built on top, forming a mound. And finally, the slope of the mound was dug into to make room for new graves. This is where 12 urn tombs had been, which seemed to be from the earliest period. It is an urn tomb zone, with over half of the urn tombs located here. In urn tomb number three, various ironware and beads were found. Through the artifacts from the Iron Age that were excavated, we learned that the tomb was first built in the third century. In the second stage, there were 16 tombs which included stone chambers, stone coffins, and urns. This is when the stone chamber tomb located in the central part of the south side was built. Stone chamber tomb 96 has the largest inner chamber. It is over 2 meters high and about 10 square meters in size. At the time of the excavation, there were four urn tombs. It seems as if the people who had used the urns had adopted a new type of stone chamber tomb. Looking over the western side of the tomb built during the third stage, there were many stone chambers instead of urn tombs. Large stones were cut to build them. We can see that the final stage was built in a more advanced way than the previous stages. Considering the artifacts that were unearthed, it seems that people of the upper class were buried here. In this way, the tomb was built over a period of 400 years, from the 3rd century to the early 7th century. Why was Pogamli tomb number 3 built in multi-stories? And who were the people who built it for hundreds of years? The truth about this ancient tomb is still unclear. 
Hoganli Tomb No. 3 raises many questions which remain unanswered. An ancient kingdom remembered only by large earthenware relics. A forgotten page in the history of the Korean peninsula, we begin the story of Earth 1,500 years ago. Pogamli Tomb No. 3 in Naju was excavated in 1996. An amazing piece of history was discovered inside. Inside Stone Chamber 96, the largest in the tomb, a large urn coffin was discovered. They were earthenware urn coffins made by the ancients. It was the first time a two-meter-long urn coffin had been excavated. Who used these large urn coffins? And how were the ancients who lived in the 5th century able to make such large urns? In 2001, an important clue was unearthed through which we could trace the manufacturing process of the large urn coffin. It was the site of earthenware being fired. It was the first time a kiln for large urn coffins had been found. Dozens of kilns were found on the hills of Oryangdong Naju. The thick shards that were inside the kiln were of the same kind as the urn coffins in the nearby tombs, showing that they were made here. Over 100 kilns were found at the site. We can presume that urn coffins were mass-produced at the time. Around the 5th century, the area of Oryangdong Naju was a large industrial complex that made earthenware and urn coffins. The large urn coffins of Pogami Tomb No. 3 were never made or used anywhere else in the world, and nothing is known about how they were made. Large urn coffins are difficult to make even with modern technology. So how were they made so long ago? Because of their weight, the urns could not be made with a turning wheel. It was most likely made by putting clay tablets together. Since they were unable to use a turning wheel, they would have used sticks and thread to create a round shape. The clay was probably layered one layer at a time, drying it as they went until it reached two meters high. Even today, special technology is required to make such a thick, strong urn that would withstand a temperature of 1,000 degrees. The ancients along the Yongsangang River were already making large urns that were difficult for even modern-day people to make. The large urn coffins were the fruit of amazing technology. Who were the people who lived on the Korean peninsula at the time? More questions arose regarding the ancient society that made these urns. There are no historical records regarding the area around Pogamli Tomb No. 3 where the large urns were discovered. An immense amount of large urn coffins were found near the Yongsangang River in Chalanamdo province. Considering the fact that there are over 100 tombs that use the large urn coffins, it seems that a tribe had existed who ruled over the vast plains of Naju. Who were these people who were based in the Yongsangang River region and made these large urn coffins? During the 5th century, the southwestern region of Korea was called Mahan. However, we do not know whether Mahan was a society that merged with Pekje or whether it had been an independent power. Archaeologists only presume that the power in the Yongsangang River region was Mahan, and they were the ones that made the urn tombs. The people who formed a strong power in the Yongsangang River region. How will their history be written? The mystery of the large urn coffins remains unsolved.